Blam. <laughs> okay, folks, uh, once again, live on tape from a not so undisclosed location in St. John's, Newfoundland, uh, just off Kitty Vitty Village here. Uh, I'm in a place called Cockles Cove. This place is actually not only a beautiful place, but it's a great place to watch whales from. Uh, myself and my late wife, Linda, we used to come out here and just watch the whales here. So, welcome once again to another episode of In the Library of Graphic Literature, Literature with your host, Wallace Ryan. And uh, special thanks to my buddy Chris, who gave me a ride out here and is my, uh, basically my technical, uh, my technical master here. But yeah, he helped me set up the framing and everything and all that. And, uh, and also, too, the other good thing is the, there's no wind here today, so there's no, you'll be able to hear me. It was windy at the last one. So I, I got a few cool things because I actually gathered up a couple of weeks worth of, worth of stuff for, uh, to do this show. I could have done it like uh, for last week, but I put it all together because there wasn't a lot that came out this week. The first thing that's really cool is these Marvel Comics mini books. These came out, uh, the mini comics, they came out in these those little plastic balls in the those huge bubblegum machines in the 60s and 70s. And you could get a, uh, you know, you could, as a matter of fact, there's there's a picture of what they, they look like. They came in one of those type of things. And you could, you know, you could uh, uh, basically, uh, you get a little comic for 25 cents, whatever it was. And uh, so there's a... Uh, Things like, or just basically like little stories going through about whoever, right? This is the Captain America one. So yeah, they were kind of cool little, uh, cool little books. And the uh, uh, the folks at Abrams, they did a, a great little set that has all of them, and then a little book about the mini comics, and it comes in this really cool little slipcase. So. Uh, Good one there, Marvel. Now, oh, what else we got here? Okay, we got Adrian Tomine, Tomini, whatever. Uh, the loneliness of the long distance cartoonist. And I like this because it's it's printed too on uh, on this lined paper, which gives it sort of a neat neat kind of feel to the whole thing. But I, yeah, I always did like his stuff. Introspective, thought-provoking, and kind of fun too. So there we go. Not bad, hey? So that one, pretty good for, and that's from the fine folks at Drawn and Quarterly. Next we have from Marvel Comics, we have volume 22 of the Marvel Masterworks. And uh, this is uh, another uh, John Byrne, uh, filled uh, uh, issue. Now I do have the omnibuses, but like I mean, I'm collecting the masterworks and trying to make a complete series, especially of the later stuff. So I decided to get it anyway, and uh, but also see what the printings are like here. Now, of course, this is the classic John Byrne run on it, which to me is as it's as good as the Hickman or the Kirby uh, Lee run on it, especially this uh, near death of of uh, Galactus. But a, and a great Doctor, Doctor Doom story. Nightmare. Another great uh, Inhuman's Tale. And then we got the uh, uh, the X-Men stopping by, and then of course this classic "What If," and then it ends with uh, actually the uh, this was the uh, and this actually was one of my favorite burn uh, things was his uh, his Silver Surfer that uh, came out in the uh, the eighties there and. Uh, Inked by Tom Palmer. I think this was actually written by, script by Stanley. So yeah, 
that bad, you know, st stand still had, had a bit in, in doom, but I actually always, always liked that, that book there. Oh, got to be careful I don't fall to my death. Now, next we have The Power of Shazam. So this is the Jerry Ordway book. This includes the, uh, the graphic novel, the, uh, the Power of Sh uh, Shazam, which is, which is him really by himself, Jerry Ordway all by himself. Power of Shazam, letter by John, John Costanza, everything else written and illustrated by Jerry Ordway. And it's, it's a great, and even at the time when it came out, I always liked that, uh, that version of Shazam, right? Then it became a, a series and uh, uh, it, it basically was uh, scripted by Ordway but drawn by other folks. And I didn't read as much of that, but I did, I read the first one. I love the power of Shazam, the original, uh, the original series. Absolutely fabulous. And worth buying. Nice cover too by him. Check out the back. So yes, very, very nice work. Now, what else do we got here? Oh, we got a couple more last minute things here. This is from uh, this week, actually. We only got one book that came out this week. And this is it. Last of the in Independence by Matt Fraction and Karen Dwyer. So this is basically, it's a story of a three people who hold up a bank and they rob all this money from it. It turns out to be mob money and of course the mob comes to get it. And uh, it's actually pretty, I, I, I like the format. It's, it is of course in a horizontal format and it has this sort of black and white and uh, sort of greenish gray, it's sort of an undertone to the whole thing, which kind of adds a neat little feel to the whole thing. I won't go too far so that you see the, the ending of it, but I, I actually read this last night too before uh, before I came out to do the, the show and it was really good. I loved it. Okay, one more book left here. Before I talk about that book too, uh, way out there is, is Cape Spear. That's where we shot last week's, uh, the other the episode out there at Cape Spear. That's the road that we took out to get to. The city of St. John's is basically that way behind me. And this is this is the back part of the of more or less of Signal Hill where, where basically I shot the other episode uh, down by the trail that's down around that way. This place isn't as, as crowded, so this is another reason that I went for this place. Plus I just love this whole whole area here. It has has a lot of memories. And like I say, great place for spotting whales. Now Last, but definitely certain, certainly not least, is Cruel Summer, a criminal collection from Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Of course, I, I love criminal, and I love anything criminal related. Brubaker and uh, Phillips do, well, they really do do the best in uh, crime noir. But I mean, there's still a lot of other great crime noir out there uh, from years ago. Uh, was it uh, Armed and Dangerous? Was really good. S same too with Stray Bullets. If you liked this, you'll like those. But I love uh, Brew Baker, so uh, anything that from Br Brew Baker that comes out, uh, I'm a big fan of. So yeah, definitely worth uh, so worth uh, buying, so worth reading. Cruel Summer. Okay, well that's uh, seems to be about it there for for this week. Of course I got all fancied up and all that for, for this episode. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful day out here. It was actually cloudy earlier and I was beginning to wonder if, whether or not we would we would actually get away with, uh, with shooting this today, but the sun cleared, the uh, clouds cleared off, sun came out and everything was a-okay. Now before, as I sign off here, I'm going to sign off with basically giving you a, a little pan of of the area here just to give you an idea of, of, of where I am and, and a flavor for Cuckles Cove here, just off Cuckles Cove Road in St. John's, Newfoundland. Once again, thanks for uh, having me over and uh, check out this week's uh, 
Thursday Comics uh, podcast with me and uh, and Dennis Osborne, and then next week uh, we have the another DC giant size. Uh, uh, I mean, a, a, a Thursday Comics giant size, and I do believe it's the Silver Age uh, DC omnibuses we'll be talking about. And the great thing about the the, the Thursday Comics giant sizes is, is when we do up lists, for instance, like our top ten. Silver Age, DC, Marvel, ones, whatever our lists are, we don't share <laughs> our placings with each other, and we just take come come in fresh with our lists, and we just read them out right then and there, so we both get, so we get a bit of a surprise along with you. So check it out, anyways, and uh, I'll see you same time next week. Oh yeah, and uh, I've decided to run for city council here in St. John's. So uh, for any viewers of St. John's who are uh, of this video who are in St. John's, vote for me. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for having me over, and here we go for a little look around, a little tour. Ooh, let's lift it up here. Of uh, we'll walk over towards the edge. Here's the here's where I'm standing there. <laughs> so yeah, like I say, way over there is uh, once again the most easterly point in North America. That's where I shot. You can even see the. Uh, the buildings out there anyway uh, but here this is I mean I always love this here especially with the the hillside here beautiful hillside here there's a trail actually that cuts up through through here through the mountains and all that and comes out out over there by uh, Signal Hill but yeah it's, it's quite beautiful and then there's another little cove well there's another big sort of mountain right there and then over here we have a little village another bay that comes in there and right there those are called the White Hills so yeah so it's a great little uh, perfect little spot for for shooting uh, the show I love this little bay here this little I mean it's it's bloody impossible to get down there because when you look closely down there except for maybe on that far point there the rest of it is basically all cliffs and that's the ocean so once you drop down you get in that there there's no shore there you're right in well it's still relatively shallow because you can see something but it's still you're in the ocean and i can guarantee you that even though this is summertime that is not very warm but look at this look even down there all right something else eh so yeah this is uh just another look at uh and what it's like to live in uh, St. John's, Newfoundland. Once again, thanks for having me over. See you next week, folks. Bye!